I mean, I'm a huge fan of Boris. Uh, I, I watched him, you know, during his tennis playing days and um, listened to his commentary on the BBC. And so I was hugely excited about it. But as a filmmaker, also, the great thing that, that Boris, the talent that Boris has, as opposed to many great athletes, is his ability as a storyteller. And so his ability, not only, not only my opportunity to tell the story, but his ability as a storyteller to tell his own story, that was hugely exciting to me. I, but I mostly love about movies when it says it's based on a true story. Because then I, I put my attention to it uh, much more careful. And then this is what, what this, this film is about. It's, it's not based on a true story. It is a true story. And that's... Uh, you, 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 know, you, you watch it later on and you think, this, this must be a movie. Well, my, my life seems like a movie sometimes. I just happen to be, um, it just happened to be real. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm honored to be part of the Berlinale. You know, I was always coming here as a fan. Uh, I was always wondered, one of these days, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be a part of a, of a movie. And uh, thanks to to John and Alex, uh, I was able to do that. So I'm, I'm very honored to be here. Boris, with great generosity, uh, you know, opened up and, 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 and talked to me at, at, at enormous length. Uh, but particularly after the second interview, you know, part of my job was to kind of make sense of, uh, of, of this moment of Boris going to prison and how that connected to the 17-year-old who won Wimbledon. And so occasionally, you know, I will, uh, you know, in addition to Boris telling his story, occasionally I will interject, ask questions, wonder about things in ways that um, is personal to me, but also to some extent I hope stands for kind of the point of view of the audience, a kind of questioning uh, and, um, and ultimately search for, for a larger meaning. I'm the last person to complain about my life. You know, I'm 55 years old and I'm very proud of the things that I've done. Uh, did I make mistakes? Of course I did. Uh, everybody should raise their hand if they haven't done their own mistakes. In my case, it's just reported to the world. That's the difference between the mistakes. Um, look, it's very, very difficult to win Wimbledon at 17. You got to be a little bit crazy, you know, borderline, crossing the line, doing things that nobody has done before in order to achieve something that nobody has achieved before. It's, you know, you, you expect these, these you know, world champions in whatever sport they are to be like everybody else. Well, we are different. Otherwise, we wouldn't be better than other, in my case, thousands of other tennis players. So um, to have that mindset and live a normal lifestyle is almost impossible. Because you always, you know, in, a, in, a, in my heart of hearts, I am a tennis player. And, and when, when the going gets tough, I usually get better. I'm not afraid of a tie break. I'm not afraid of a final. But in real life, that's a problem sometimes. So it took me a little bit to understand it, to mature, and to, to start to control my life, which I have done. It's just that some of the things that uh, went wrong, you know, years ago, uh, uh, I, I've paid a, a heavy price for it, but uh, you know, uh, today I'm, I'm a bit better for it. I'm a bit, hopefully, smarter. I'm a bit more humble, maybe, than I used to be, because once I have a tennis racket in my hand and a tennis ball, I don't need anybody. In fact, I think it was somebody at the festival who, who dubbed it a docu-Western, and I like that remark. I mean, one of the things that we discovered as we were putting together some of the tennis sequences was that it was very much, we wanted to take it out of the genteel world of the tennis club and put it in kind of the dusty world of the gunslinger. And so we used uh, some of the music of uh, Ennio Morricone uh, from some of the uh, Sergio Leone spaghetti westerns to really give a sense of, of, of that mano a mano vibe. Uh, and, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. In a way, my life as a tennis player has prepared me for my time in jail, because you know the only thing that, that saves you on a tennis court in a Wimbledon final is your mind, uh, because you're afraid, uh, uh, you you um, respect your opponent, you don't know the umpire, you don't know how it, you know how the match is going to be, and 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 your your life in jail is very very similar to that. You never know what's going to be around the corner tomorrow. 
So, so um, uh, uh, it, it helped me in a way to prepare uh, for my life after tennis because you know I've I've been 17 years a tennis professional, but I I stopped when I was 32 years old. Now I'm you know 22, 23 year uh, 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 citizen of the world, and and my my tennis life. You know, the wins and the losses have prepared me f for my my life after. And, and yes, it's been it's been ups, it has some downs, but you know, overall, I'm I'm still I'm still sitting here, and I'm 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 okay. If you if you like the sport, you want to listen to I don't know how many former number ones we have in this. You know, McEnroe, Borg, Djokovic, Vilanda, You know, Michael Stich was number two. I mean. Who, who has that? Honestly, I, I want to brag a little bit now. I want to, I want to show off a little because it's, I'm really proud of that.